Let's work with a real database. You're going to need to install MongoDB for your platform. In the download center, you should see downloadable for all major platforms. On Mac, I find it a lot easier to install Mongo with Homebrew. So this is what I did on my machine. So once you install it, make sure that the MongoD is running and make sure you can access Mongo with the Mongo command. The default database is test. To load some data into Mongo, I prepared a load test data.js and I configured it to load into this test database. To get this script and the configuration, I've tagged this point in the code as v71begin. Added a MongoDB URI configuration, which points to the default test database and the load test data script. Remember that in package.json, we already have the MongoDB dependency installed. So all we need to do to run this load test data script is to run it with Babel node, load test data. And you should see four contests and six names. So this load test data inserts consist information and also inserts name relations. So we have initial names to work with as well. So we do have two collections, contests and names. And make sure in your Mongo client that you can read these collections. So the count here should be four. So once we have the data in the database, the next step would be to change our API to read the data directly from the database instead of the in-memory data that we have here. So we're gonna actually remove this test data file, remove this import statement, remove everything that uses the in-memory data. Let's go back to a clean slate in our API, just like that. So to read from Mongo, we first need to import the Mongo client, Mongo client, we import that from the MongoDB package. We should also always import the uh, assert library to make sure that we're not getting any errors when we connect. Import assert from assert. And whenever we need to connect to Mongo, we need to import the configuration. So import config from dot dot slash config. We're inside the API level. And the first thing we need is we need a, a MongoDB object. So we start with an empty object and then we go with Mongo client dot connect. We connect to the config.mongodb URI and this call gives me a callback and in that callback it exposes an error first and then the connected DB. So we always assert equal null the error. This will raise an error if we do have an error and if we don't have an error then I have a successful connection to mongodb and I'm just going to assign it to the global object here. So now inside my routes, I have access to the MDB connected object. So let's read the list of contests from Mongo. To check the syntax that you can use, you can see the node MongoDB native driver at GitHub. You'll see examples to insert document, update document, delete document, and find all documents. And find all documents is what we need. So we're gonna start with MDB, the connected object, dot collection. And our collection here is contests. This is what we inserted in the database. And I'm going to find all the records. And then this gives me a promise. And I can either do a to array on the promise or I can do a dot each and loop over every record. I don't need to return an array here. If you remember, we converted our contests into an object structure. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to loop over the documents. So this dot each method allow me to loop over all the documents returned from the MongoDB find statement. This dot each method give me an error first and then give me access to a single item from the loop which represents a single contest. However, this is all still async so I can't really respond in here. I have to respond from within the each call. So what we do in this case is we start with an empty object. Let's call this contests. And then in here, in every iteration of the loop, we add a record to contests. So this would be from contest.id, and this would be contest. And we should definitely assert equal null error. Always do that. But in here, we can do an if statement that basically says, if I don't have a contest object, then this means that I don't have any more contests to process. So I've processed all the contests in this case, so I can safely respond with the contests that I processed all of them. And I can return here so that I don't execute this other line one more time. So let's actually go ahead and test this. So to test, we're gonna go to localhost slash API slash contests. Looks like I have an error here somewhere. This is assert. 
Server restarting. Let's test. And I see all the contest information in here coming from the database. However, if you remember, the first level of this API, I don't need all the information. I only need ID category and contest name. Because if I don't project just these three columns, I'll be asking for more data than my application is consuming. So in Mongo, we can easily do a project call here. And this project call takes an object with the fields that you want to be included. So in here, we're going to include the ID. You just give it a one. And then category name, also one. And also the contest name. Let's test. And here you go. It's only including ID, category name, and contest name. For this other API, we need mdb.collection. We're still doing the contests collection. And in here, we want to do a find one. And for this one, we're going to find by the ID. So the ID in this case is request.params.contest ID. But usually Express reads this ID as a string, so we should convert it into a number because in the database, the IDs are numbers. And then this is going to give me a promise. So I'm going to do a dot then on it. This promise give me the contest object that I'm interested in. So I can simply respond with this contest promise. And I should also handle errors if any. So console.error here. And we can test that. Contests slash four. Give me the contest information for the contest four. Contest slash one. Give me the information for contest one, including name IDs. So now I have the two APIs, contests and one contest. However, if you remember in our API, we actually had a structure that says contests are the list of contests. So instead of returning contests directly here, we should actually return it as an object because that's how our React application is reading the information. So let's test. So it's now contests is an object. So if everything worked correctly, our application will just work, but now it's working from the database. So when we click here, the description we're getting is from the database and not the fake one that we've done before. Same thing for all the contests.